were on our way with the first rays of light. Skiing and Australian spring, what more beautiful combination could there be? It is a long two days trip from Melbourne to Kosciuszko via Gippsland, but in spring it does not seem so long. There is beauty everywhere, young foliage, blossom and wattles, fast flowing rivers and peaceful pastures. The early morning air is crisp and clear and the smell of gum trees, so typical of Australia, is everywhere. It is necessary to leave early in the morning to reach Kosciuszko the next day. Kosciuszko is, of course, the roof of Australia, her highest mountain. 7,300 feet above the sea. We have now crossed into New South Wales past Cooma and are about to begin our climb which starts at Jindabyne. From here we have our first glance of the snow of Kosciuszko. The scenery has changed now and in contrast to the luscious growth of Victoria, the country is now barren and the trees are stunted. The paddocks hardly carry enough grass to feed the few sheep. As we enter Kosciuszko National Park, with its imposing stone entrance gate, we can smell the snow which is now close by. Ten minutes later we are on the snow, fortunately on a snow-ploughed road, and a few miles further we reach Smiggins Hole, 5,000 feet high, which is journey's end for our car. Here everyone changes into snowmobiles for the last leg of the trip to the New South Wales Government Chalet at Charlotte Pass. Smiggins is a busy place at any time during the skiing season, but on a Saturday morning there is quite a crowd waiting for transport. As the track often happens to be blocked by snowdrifts, snowplows and snowcats are stationed at Smiggins. On this particular day, the convoy of snowmobiles has a so-called snowcat as a leader an odd-looking but very serviceable vehicle belonging to the Snowy River Authority. It can negotiate soft, fresh and deep snow in which snowmobiles usually get bogged, so the snowmobile drivers are usually glad to have the tracks packed and smoothed out by the yellow snowcat. Not everybody can get a seat in the snowmobile and many prefer eight-mile ski yoring in the crisp, cold air to the uncomfortable ride in the snowmobile which though designed for four, always carries eight on a busy day. This exciting ride up from Smiggins takes about an hour, after which we arrive at the Charlotte Pass Chalet, which is a sturdy but not particularly attractive stone building. There is a noisy coming and going, and the staff is busy preparing for the new arrivals. There are friends whom one has not seen for a long time, often for several seasons and memories of previous skiing holidays are refreshed. In the beginning of our stay, we were not too lucky with the weather. In the first night after our arrival, a blizzard developed, which was unusual in its fierceness, even for Australia's highest mountain. No wonder we felt cold. As we found out afterwards, the temperature outside had dropped to 16 degrees Fahrenheit. difficult to find one's skis. There were three inches of snow in the well-sheltered porch in which guests keep their skis. this, it was essential to keep the inside of the chalet warm and cosy. This was not an easy job and kept the boilermen busy day and night. 
One hundred guests were crowded into the three lounges of the chalet and idled the time away by talking, mostly about skiing. On this wild Sunday morning, the snowmobile left with departing guests but never reached its destination, Smiggins. It got stuck in deep snow three miles from Smiggins and the unfortunate guests had a long, strenuous walk in really frightening weather. Their luggage was only recovered from the snowmobile the following morning. This was a nasty experience, but apart from a few frostbites, no one fortunately suffered any injury. one could go out again to view the fairyland scenery King Winter had created in his attack of savage fury. peaceful and quiet and beautiful like an old world Christmas picture postcard. Soon the sun was out and everyone was again on top of the world. There is no more beautiful scenery than mountains and trees covered in deep powder snow, the sky a deep blue without a cloud and happy people everywhere enjoying the crisp clear air after the snowfall. make the most of the good weather while it lasts and skiers are not slow to take advantage of fresh powder snow so the ski toe gets very busy and often there are long queues of people waiting for their turn. the Charlotte Pass ski tow, one has a lovely view down to the chalet and annexes, which look like toys from a building set. In the other direction is the Kosciuszko main range, with its imposing peaks, such as Carruthers, Twynham, Mount Townsend and the summit. All of these are over 7,000 feet high.
There is a short but quite steep slope from the top of the ski turn near Charlotte Pass to the chalet. Indifferent and also very good skiers practice here, and at the time this picture was taken, Sasha Nequipil was in charge of the ski school. Since then, the style in skiing has changed. By the way, it does this every year. But everyone can see that she is an excellent skier. Other skiers try to follow her, and some pupils are nearly as good as the master. This shot was only taken because the skier happens to be our Peter. From a technical point of view, it leaves much to be desired as it was taken against the sun and is badly overexposed. private race had been arranged in which many good skiers, some of them well known in the Australian skiing fraternity, took part. You'll later see in action Bill Day, Bob Arnott, Michael David, Simon Brown and many others. Good luck to them and ski hail. day of our holiday on Mount Kosciuszko. It was time to go home to Melbourne, and the long two days drive was nothing to look forward to. We said goodbye to the chalet and got ready for our departure. Then the snowmobiles took us to Smiggins. We hope it was not goodbye to Kosciuszko, but Alphabetus Eve.